Good afternoon, and welcome to the City of Memphis and Shelby County Joint Task Force um, press briefing for March the 25th. I'm David Sweat, Deputy Director, Shelby County Health Department, joined today once again by Chief Doug McGowan from the City of Memphis. And we'll jump straight into the numbers. Here in Shelby County, 90,615 cases have been reported so far. Moving across to Arkansas, 5,488 cases have been reported from Crittenden County in Arkansas. 20,389 cases have been reported from DeSoto County in Mississippi. 4,774 cases from Fayette County in Tennessee. And 7,085 cases have been reported from Tipton County in Tennessee. As far as deaths, we have reported 1,558 fatal cases here in Shelby County. That includes 10 new reports of death uh, yesterday. And the 90,615 cases represents an increase of 118 cases yesterday reported to the Shelby County Health Department. We have, in the vaccine campaign, administered 269,913 doses of COVID vaccine. And that includes 185,864 people who have had a first dose of a two dose series and 84,049 people have received two doses of a two dose series or have received the single dose of Johnson and Johnson and are considered fully vaccinated. As much as the vaccine campaign is front and center and the, the main thing that we are all encouraging people to take advantage of right now, it is still important that people get tested, especially if they have any signs or symptoms that could be representing COVID-19 disease, because the first step in the process of protecting yourself and others and the community at large is isolating whenever you are infected with COVID-19. So we don't wanna forget testing. And as we continue to do outreach testing, I believe we have a graphic about a test a site that's gonna be available to the community on Saturday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Whitechapel AME Church on Fields Road in Memphis. So if you are in that area or you wanna take advantage of that outreach test event at Whitechapel AME, please come out on Saturday. It is free and uh, the uh, information is, is as you see on the screen. And as far as other uh, test site appointments we still have in the community, uh, about 16,000 plus test, community supported test sites, uh, test site appointments available. And we do encourage all people who have any signs or symptoms, mild symptoms, severe symptoms, or anyone who has been exposed to another case and may be infected and would like to know their status to take advantage of the uh, free community supported test sites that we have made available throughout the pandemic. And with that, I'm gonna invite Chief McGowan to come give us an update on the vaccine campaign. Thank you, David. Uh, as David mentioned, uh, the tennis system today, I just checked on the way over is up to 274,000 people or 2,074,000 uh, immunizations given. But uh, we know uh, that we are approaching 300,000 actual shots in arms. Uh, the difference between the data is actually when the whole system is complete, the data is uploaded and recognized in the tennis system that it is recorded. And so uh, we're always gonna be a little bit ahead in our vaccines uh, before it's reflected in the tennis system. So we are approaching the 300,000 mark of vaccinations administered. Just in the last seven days, we've given 39,000 through our community pods and through our fixed site pods and our healthcare systems and clinics and pharmacies have given about another 5,000. So that's 44,000 doses administered in the last seven days, which is a high watermark for our distribution of vaccines. But as we open up to all phases and all ages, uh, we're not going to stop uh, looking for ways to expand our throughput and not going to stop asking for more vaccine. And so the question is, when do you think that might happen? Uh, our forecast is that the very first week of April that begins on the 5th of April, uh, we should expect to see an opportunity for an uptick in the number of vaccines available to us. Uh, we are working on ways to make sure we have a sufficient throughput to get those vaccines in arms. And so 
that is our first real opportunity for another significant uptick in vaccines. Uh, today, uh, we are underway vaccinating people as we speak. We are keeping a watchful eye on the weather. Uh, here in another hour or two, we could see some severe storms pop up, so we may have to suspend operations this afternoon depending on the severity of the weather. Uh, but for anyone who misses an appointment because of that, we will contact you and let you know when other appointments are available for you to choose from. Uh, the balance of this week, we will be vaccinating the Arlington and Lakeland School Districts. Uh, this weekend, we'll have a 1,000 uh, pod availability in Orange Mound at the Melrose High School, and that's in partnership with the Mount Pisgah and Mount Moriah East churches. Next week, we'll finish vaccinating Shelby County School teachers, and we're going to offer some new first doses with our community partners uh, at the Healing Center in the 38118 area, at the Golden Gate Church in the North Memphis and South Fraser area, the New Harvest Baptist in the 38106 South Memphis area, and then St. Paul Baptist in 38116. Now, I mentioned to you on Tuesday that uh, we are going at a pretty rapid clip. Uh, our inventory of vaccine is coming down and we expect a first big uh, dose of that to increase in the first week of April. And so over the Easter and MLK weekend, there is going to be very limited availability through the public pods, but many of the pharmacies, clinics will still be offering vaccines uh, during that period of time. And on that point, if you'll check the city's website, and if you haven't checked in a while, I encourage you to do so, the covid19.memphistn.gov, uh, you will be able to get information about not just the public pods that we are offering, but everywhere that is offering access to vaccine to the general public. We have information about how you can get in contact. We will have information about those community-based pods. Uh, so literally, there is a place for you to get information uh, almost anywhere in the county. Uh, a reminder that moving into next week, uh, we open up appointments on Friday and next week we'll be vaccinating everyone 16 and up. So we encourage you to take advantage of those appointments. Uh, I'd like to wrap up by talking uh, to the Latinx uh, population that we have here. Um, we know that there has been a lack of sufficient capacity on our 222 shot uh, for multilingual personnel to answer calls and that's something we are working on and uh, we believe there will be improvements just over the next few days. I also want to say that the only thing we are interested in is uh, getting people vaccinated and when we collect information it's just the basic uh, medical information. We're not interested in anyone's status, we're only interested in getting you vaccinated so please Come on out and get vaccinated. Uh, that's what we're interested in. For those of you who are among the nearly 300,000 who have received a shot, we encourage you to tell your family and friends and encourage them to join you in our uh, countywide vaccination effort. That's what's gonna get us out of the pandemic. And so with that, I'll stop and take questions that you may have. Kelly Roberts, WMC. Hi there, my first question is kind of in preparation for tomorrow when that final phase opens up. How many appointments do you anticipate opening up? And, you know, with, with your message on people who have been vaccinated, sharing that news and, and getting their friends and family to um, get enthusiastic about getting vaccinated, do you guys believe that the demand really is going to be there when that next or in this final phase opens up? Or do you think that there may be work to do to get, say, maybe the younger people um, gung-ho about this whole thing? Uh, well, if uh, the messaging that we receive and the calls that we receive uh, from uh, organizations, agencies, businesses, and individuals is any indication, we believe there's going to be plenty of demand. Uh, It'll probably be uh, several weeks hence when we see any tapering of that, if there is any. Um, I'll come back to your first question, which is how many appointments. I can't tell you exactly how many, but I will tell you that as many vaccine doses as I have on hand, that's how many appointments I will have for next week. Because as I talked on Tuesday, we believe that we will become, come close to running out on Thursday of next week as we move into the Easter and MLK weekend. So uh, we're gonna off offer as many appointments as we have doses available. And then when we get more doses in for that next week, we'll offer as many as we have uh, that week as well. 
but you wouldn't expect there to be a significant di diminution of the number of doses that are available or the number of appointments from what you've seen. Okay, thank you. And my second question is a question I got from a viewer trying to schedule an appointment for a homebound loved one. Um, they said that they had filled out the form, but they hadn't heard from the city. They were wondering kind of what the next steps are, if things are working like the way you want them to work when it comes to scheduling those appointments for homebound populations. Sure. Uh, we will be working through the list of people who are scheduled. Uh, we uh, Last week was our first week of doing that, and we had a, a list of several hundred individuals already registered, and we worked uh, most of the way through that list. So. Uh, we should not expect a very long wait, but if you register, just keep following up with us, but uh, we will make sure that we get to the folks who are registered on the homebound list. So it is going well. Uh, we just confirmed with the state that we will continue to receive uh, vaccines sufficient to cover our homebound efforts. And that uh, for the city of Memphis and our efforts, that's several hundred vaccines per week. Our partners at Maritan are also doing homebound and there's some private individual physicians who are doing homebound. So. Uh, I would estimate that there's, you know, three to 400 homebound uh, appointments each and every week. So we're moving through at a pretty rapid clip. Brad Broders, Local 24. Hey, Doug, good afternoon. Um, just for, for a, just a legit, my first question is kind of logistical. I know you said, is there a rough ballpark on when you expect to open up the appointments tomorrow time of day? And if there are still slots this Saturday, could people sign up for those when they become eligible tomorrow? And I'll follow. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll announce if there are any appointments that are available. We're down to just very few, to be honest, Brad, the rest of this week. Uh, so as I said, on Tuesday, we had several thousand available. People have taken advantage of those. So we're down to just a handful. And I can't even tell you if there's still any available and open for this Saturday. So. Um, but on Friday when we open that up, I expect that to happen about midday when we typically open those appointments. It's usually afternoon, sometime between noon and 2 when we open those appointments, and I expect that to happen again this Friday. Thanks, Doug. And as a follow-up, I know Kelly kind of alluded to this, but with uh, the, the more of the pop-up locations opening in the coming weeks and those new zip codes that haven't had it before, uh, how important will um, the ongoing efforts be, you know, getting community leaders, pastors in those areas, and how is that effort still important ongoing in the weeks ahead? Oh, it's incredibly important, and, and frankly, that's who we're partnering with with these community pods or agencies, organizations, and pastors have been leading and asking. Uh, quite frankly, I have a longer list than I have capacity to fill for these community pods. Uh, we are trying to meet as many of those as we can. Again, we're uh, kind of overlaying the requests that we have for a community-based pod with the data that shows the zip code where we need to have the presence. And so, uh, so far that has worked pretty well. Uh, you've talk, heard me talk about some of the data. Uh, when we went to the Hickory Ridge Mall with World Overcomers, we had almost 1,500 people show up. So uh, we get the messenger is important, the message is important, the location is important. And so we're trying to bring all those things together with our community-based pods. Michaela Watts, Commercial Appeal. Good afternoon. I have a couple of follow-up questions for Doug McGowan on efforts uh, for vaccination outreach in the Latinx community. Doug, could you expand just a little or elaborate a little bit further on what the follow-up actions are going to be that the city will take to get more Spanish-speaking um, operators into this operation? Yeah, so we've actually, we have a contract with the call center uh, to, that, that was one of the issues was there was not sufficient um, staff who are multilingual, so uh, they're gonna add some capacity of staff because people are having to wait uh, too long to have uh, someone who spoke Spanish specifically uh, that they needed. So we're going to add some capacity there. Second, we've also heard that on our website and in our schedule, it would be important that we have that translated. Uh, so we're moving to have that done as well, just for ease of navigation on the website and for scheduling. We have some specific outreach messaging through our communications uh, department that will be going out. And we're also partnering with churches uh, who serve the Latinx uh, population uh, or have a heavily Hispanic uh, congregation so that we can get the message out that way. And we're actually hosting a pop-up site with one of those churches uh, next week. Great. Thank you so much. I don't have a follow-up. 
Hannah Grabenstein, MLK 50. Hi, um, I might have missed you mentioning what the R, somebody mentioning what the R not was for this week or for today, but I think the last I heard it was hovering right around one. And with the increased um, transmissibility of the B117 variant, I'm just wondering if it, um, you know, are we still looking at staying open if, if you know, we start to, the pandemic starts to continue to, to spread as one would expect as the R not increases, does it make sense to increase or decrease restrictions? So I'll let David talk about the R not. Uh, thank you for the question. And so right now, the reproductive rate of the virus has moved back up to about 1.04. Uh, last time it was calculated a couple days ago, it may be recalculated today. And so we may have a slightly different R not reported tomorrow, but uh, it has, we have been throughout 2021 so far, we have been below one. So we've had R not very stable for many weeks at about 0 0.84, 0 0.85, 0 0.8, 0.82. So each case was creating about eight tenths of a new case. Now each case is creating about one new case. So we are at replacement levels once again with the number of cases we have and going forward. But our positivity rate remains low. <clears throat> it's about 3.7% coming into this morning. And we're averaging around 100 new cases a day. We had 118 new cases reported today. We'll watch all of these different metrics, and if things you know start to increase or surge, then we'll reevaluate everything as a task force and make new recommendations. That's one of the reasons that we rewrite the health directives monthly, is to give ourselves flexibility to address to adjust to what the most recent data suggests we should do. So if there is any evidence that um, that, that directive needs to be tightened back up and, and, uh, and such, we will do that. But right now, uh, talking with the data team and looking at all the, all the metrics, uh, there's no particular alarm bell go bells going off at present, but we're monitoring the situation. Now, in terms of the variants, that is uh, another area where we are monitoring the situation and we do have some levels of concern. We do see an increasing proportion of the cases in the community that are being caused by the UK strain B117. It is highly transmissible, three times more easy, easily caught than the wild type Wuhan strain is. It's also 30% more lethal. Uh, vaccine does protect against it. So even though we are on a trajectory at the moment for the variants to become uh, more than 50% of the cases in the community were being caused by the UK strain. We're on that trajectory, predicted to hit that date around April 15th. Um, the vaccine protects against that strain. So we're definitely in a race between the virus and the vaccine. And the most useful thing that everyone in the community can do right now is to keep coming out filling up those shot appointments and, and getting vaccinated because that vaccine will protect against the wild type Wuhan strain that we've dealt with for the past year. It will also protect against this UK variant that is on its pathway of becoming the dominant strain locally in the next few weeks. So the vaccine would help in both of those instances. So how do you feel, how do you feel about the race between the vaccine and the variants? Do you think that that's something that we can, I don't know, I don't want to say, you know, beat, but at least tamp down the effects of an increased transmissibility? Well, I, I can tell you what I think the good signs are. The good signs are is, is high demand. And every time that we make shot appointments available, they almost immediately fill up. So we are at a point where Every time we get vaccine in the community, every time we make it available to the community, the community is taking it up and taking it up rapidly. So that's a very good sign. And we wanna maintain that. And the increased allocations that uh, Chief McGowan has talked about, that the plan from the state and with the city to con continue to increase the number of doses coming into Shelby County for our residents use, uh, indicates that, that there's a supply coming to, to meet that demand. 
So, so we're, we're grateful for all of that. And we do think that the people who have already been vaccinated is helping us as this UK variant continues to predominate in the community or become the more dominant strain. The fact that we have several hundred, you know, we're approaching 200,000 people who have been vaccinated um, with 84,000 plus people who have been fully vaccinated, all of that is going to make it harder for the virus to find a place to go. And even if it's transmissing, uh, transmissible more easily, if it has nowhere to go, it's kind of irrelevant. So the, the, you know, right now I would say that we're, we're optimistic that things are going well, the vaccine campaign and is helping us, but I'll invite Chief McGowan to talk about future allocations again, if he wishes. So that's officially answer your question. Or is there another question coming? Uh, that was it from Hannah. Okay. Um, Tony Sloan, Fox 13. Yes, I had a quick question about Moderna. I'm wondering if the city has had any problems when it comes down to the availability of that vaccine, and I have a follow-up. Uh, so availability is not uh, really an issue. I talked a little bit about this before, that uh, we, through our public pods, have been receiving a significant amount of Pfizer, uh, largely because that's uh, because we have the capacity and capability to handle Pfizer and administer Pfizer. Uh, we do a weekly allocation meeting, uh, as I've talked about before. Uh, this past week, we allocated about 19,900 doses that came into Shelby County, first doses. Um, many of our partners at the pharmacies, uh, clinics, and doctor's offices have been requesting Moderna. Uh, that number has been in the six, seven, eight, nine thousand of that 19,000. So it's nearly equally split, Moderna versus Pfizer. Uh, the public drive-through pods have been heavily weighted to Pfizer. And the private clinics, because it is a bit easier to handle and store, doesn't have quite the restrictions that Pfizer does, have been weighted to the community clinics. Thank you. And my follow-up, so this doesn't present any um, issues for people who may be trying to get that second dose of that if it isn't available um, or if they aren't able to get to a third source? That's right. So we do have uh, and we can access. Uh, so two times now we have uh, posted and presented an opportunity just like scheduling an appointment, uh, the opportunity for people who need a second dose of Moderna to come and receive it. Uh, we two weeks ago presented 3,600 appointments for second dose Moderna, and we had about 1,400 people take us up on that. This past week, we posted the opportunity for thousands of uh, doses of Moderna, and we had several hundred people take us up on that. We will continue to do that to make sure that anybody that needs a second dose of Moderna is able to receive it through one of the public sites. But I will also mention that uh, people are finding it easy to uh, reach out to the 60 plus locations that we have around uh, the county that will offer vaccines. Jane Roberts, Daily Memphian. Oh, this is for either Doug or David. The survey came out uh, this week showing that more than 30% have some reluctance to take the vaccine, which seems to really put us right where we need to be to get herd immunity. Can you comment on what you know about what percentage are reluctant and what sort of a danger that poses? Uh, David is our epidemiologist and he's the expert in this. I am not, but I would just say uh, that's why I mentioned earlier, if you are one of the nearly 300,000 people or that have received an immunization or 200,000, as David said, that have received an immunization, please share the message and talk about your experience and uh, encourage people to come out and get vaccinated. David. I was very interested in that survey data and vaccine hesitancy is something that we, we definitely want to uh, try to address. Uh, we have some uh, work that's going on behind the scenes with Dr. Randolph and the health department to create some video um, opportunities for him to talk about the safety and efficacy of the vaccine for the community. 
but certainly the word of mouth, right? If, you've, if you're one of the people who've been vaccinated, share your experience and encourage other people to get it. But you're right, that 70% um, willing to be vaccinated versus 30% saying, I'm not so sure, that puts us right at the point where we have to be to get even the bare minimum of herd immunity. And really we would like to get to a more comfortable place like 80 or 85% of those who could get vaccinated to do so. And so we will continue to outreach people. We'll continue to have conversations with folks. We'll try to create opportunities for people to share their experiences. And uh, we know that uh, as uh, Chief McGowan said, the message is important. The messenger is important. And the more people who can share their experiences with others um, by word of mouth or, or what we might call viral advertising that, hey, I got the shot, it's okay, I'm all right, um, is, is important. And we do need to engage all the people who have been willing to be vaccinated to help become ambassadors for the vaccine. Um, it, is, it, it is necessary for us to get to those levels of immunization in order to even have conversations about opening up um, more widely. If we don't ever get to the levels of immunization necessary, the virus will still be transmitting too freely in the community. Uh, one more question, uh, David or Doug. Did you say that you expect to run out of vaccine by next Thursday headed into Easter weekend? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, based on the pace at which we are administering vaccine, um, so I could certainly slow it down and drag it out, but we're trying to get as many shots in arms as quickly as we can. So when I say run out, we'll have drawn down all of our supply and then we'll just be waiting for the next dose to come in. A uh, couple of reasons. we Again, we're trying to get as many shots in arms as fast as we can. Uh, so we're trying to show that there is a demand signal here in Memphis and Shelby County. Uh, we're not uh, ashamed to say we our folks could use a couple of days break. They've been working for the last more than one year. Uh, most of the team that's been doing this has been working seven days a week since we began this vaccination effort back in January. And so uh, a couple of days to reset while we get more vaccine in, uh, but that's our plan is to deplete the supply that we have. Uh, we wanna be in a place where we're using everything we have and get ready to move forward as soon as we get the very next uh, batch of vaccine in. Those are all of our questions today. Are there any closing messages? Uh, well, I would say it's important for people, uh, you know, uh, our age would say all the cool kids are doing it, right? So everybody, if you're a cool kid, go get your vaccine. That's what everybody's doing. And I like what your mom told you, please follow the trend. Do what the cool kids are doing. I'm not sure what this age is. I guess I need a like on TikTok or something, getting the vaccine. But I encourage everybody, no matter what the message is, no matter how the vehicle by which you convey that, as David said, the message is important. The messenger is important. The influencers who uh, have some sway over their peer group, I encourage you all to get the word out and get people vaccinated. Take advantage of the appointments. We are working very hard to get as much vaccine here as fast as we can to present every opportunity and make it as easy as possible for you, no matter how you want to receive it, from your doctor, from your clinic, from a hospital system, uh, from a trusted agent in the community, through a nonprofit or a church, or through one of our community pods. Uh, we are trying to make this as easy and available to you as possible. So please help us get to where we need to be, and that is to have a significant portion of our population vaccinated. Thank you all. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you back here next week.